Good morning. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and a great weekend. Our topic today is the fatherless prophet and five reasons why a prophet needs to settle the issue of sonship. Malachi chapter 4 verses 5 through 6 closed the Old Testament for 400 years saying that Elijah would come and that he would turn the hearts of the fathers towards the children and the hearts of the children towards the father lest God come and strike the earth with a curse. The Hebrew Bible says destruction. Her adventure, the mayhem and the unrest that we are experiencing in this nation has nothing to do with political agendas or racism, but has everything to do with fatherlessness. And the Bible opens up 400 years later, Matthew chapter 1, 1, talking about the genealogy of Jesus Christ, referring to him as the son of David. So that tells me that sonship is very important to God. We are now the sons of God. When you grow up without a father, you struggle with abandonment issues, rejection issues. It alters your internal and external structures. It robs you of your birthright, your divine positioning, and your inheritance. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my father issue, how God really, truly healed me. And I mean, he has healed me in the depths of my soul. Um, my father, my mother died when I was 19. I was a freshman in college. And my father came to my mother's funeral. That was the first time I had talked to him briefly before, but that was the first time I had ever been in the same room with him or even seen his face. That really was very painful for me because all those, all these years growing up, I was well into my 30s now, all these years growing up without a father, I remember being in fourth grade walking home and hearing kids talk about they were hanging out with their dads and what their dads were doing. And I remember asking God, talking to a God I didn't even know yet, but asking him, where is my father? And I felt that I felt all the issues that we feel without having a father, the loneliness, the pain, the hurt. But so after... I ran, my father came to my mother's funeral. He disappeared for a few years. He was in and out. There was no real relationship, no real dialogue. And then 20 so years later, I get a call from a hospital in Las Vegas saying that one of your family members is sick. Can you come quickly? And so I wasn't sure who that was. I I'd already buried my mother, buried my grandparents, thought my father would die somewhere and I wouldn't know anything about it. And then it would be all over and I'd never have to think about it again. But my sick relative ended up being my father. So I got my car, me and my oldest daughter, and we drove to Vegas and plopped on the side of the freeway was this sign that said, honor thy mother and thy father. We don't honor our parents because of they were great or because of what they did or didn't do. We honor them because it's a biblical principle and it is right in the sight of God and that God will bless your life for it. So when I walk into the room, the first thing he writes on a piece of paper is, will you be my caretaker? I'm like, after all these years that I haven't seen you, you want me to take care of you? And the Holy Spirit said, yes. And I was so like devastated. I did not want to do it. But God told me to. So I moved him from Vegas, moved him into my home. And that was probably one of the most difficult years of my life because I didn't realize all the pain and the rejection issues and the anger that I had um, resonant in my soul that had been pressed down and forgotten about. I really thought that I had settled that issue and that I had forgiven him. But I understand now about forgiveness that you have to forgive in layers. I, I forgave him for abandoning our family, but I didn't forgive him for leaving us uncovered and unprotected and allowing men to molest us and, and bother us. And so there are so many things that I had not forgiven him for that I didn't even realize it. But God began the healing process. It was so painful because I was giving him something that he didn't give me. And I remember there, I was, I was wanting to confront him and I wanted to say something to him. But I felt like I couldn't because I was still stuck in, in the child mode with my father. And I remember a counselor said to me, a pastor said to me, he said, he said, as long as he lives in, as long as you live in his truth, you're never going to heal. He needs to hear your truth. And so I want to tell you, if you need to confront your father, do it in love, but you, uh, you have the right and you have the privilege as a grown woman or a grown man to confront your father. And I realized when I confronted him, all the brokenness that came up in him and he just looked so afraid. And I said, I said, daddy, you've been running from this your whole entire life. But as that story unfolds, it really turned out in an amazing, amazing way. I got the opportunity to love my father and have him love me. And one of the things that I asked him to do, because I understood the principle of endowments, 
spiritual endowments. I asked him to lay hands on me and command a blessing and unlock the inheritance that I did not have access to. And the other thing is I, I forgave him completely past, present, and future. He wasn't able to fix everything that happened to me or everything that was broken. And I, and, the, and I got the privilege of hearing his story. Fathers are missing for so many reasons. It's not always because they want to be. Sometimes they just don't have the capacity to be the father that you need. And I realized that my father grew up in a very abusive home. My grandfather was a very, very wealthy man. He was well known in his in the state and well known in his city, but my father did because of the abuse. My father didn't have the capacity to even be the father that I needed. And the thing that really stuck out to me, being that it was the year of jubilee, Leviticus twenty five ten says that every man will return to his own family. But because I obeyed God in that, I got the I got the privilege of going to my first family reunion and meeting hundreds and hundreds of people with my genes and my DNA. And it was so amazing to be in the same room with people that were just like me. We looked alike. We talked alike. We thought alike. We were in similar professions. We were all very creative and artistic. And that settled in me something that had been broken and, and, and missing for a very long time. It's a powerful thing to be attached to your um, to reattach to your divine and natural inheritance. And the other thing that it helped me accept my father for who he was, who he was. Acceptance is a powerful, powerful thing. He made your father. If, you, if your father is still alive and you have the ability to speak to him and talk to him, go make it right. If you call yourself a Christian and a spiritual believer, God will empower you to bring healing to that relationship. But it is important to accept him where he is at right now. One of the best ministry advice that I've ever gotten is start where you're at. So I'm going to tell you, if, if you have issues with your father, start where you're at. Because when your father is missing, it's very difficult. Your perception of God is very skewed. If your father was lenient, you're going to think God is lenient. If your father was absent, you're going to think God was absent. So it's so important to fix your relationship with God so God can alter and rearrange your relationship and your perception of him because he is holy. He's a loving God. He is a provider. He's faithful. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you, that he loves you with an everlasting love, and he's nothing like your earthly Father. So I want to talk about five things that a prophet, five reasons why a prophet needs to settle the issue of sonship. Number one is that out of the abundance, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If a prophet has not settled the issue of sonship or still struggles with rejection and abandonment, that because he is a spokesperson for God, he will not speak the word of God with the same heart and the same inflection that God speaks it. God is love. It, it is possible to deliver difficult messages and bring correction in a spirit of love. But if when a prophet has not settled that issue, he will be heavy, heavy on the judgment and low on mercy and low on grace. We are New Testament prophets. We have been all been given the ministry of reconciliation. Like I said in a previous video that we are children of God first, we are sons of God first, and that we are prophets second. So a prophet has to walk in love can, as far as I'm concerned, more than any other gifting because the damage to wreak havoc in the body of Christ is higher than it is than any other gifting. The next thing is what I call the fig leaf syndrome, that you prophets, if you have in a prophetic house and your prophet has not settled the issue of sonship, that he you will create programs and and use ministry to heal your wounds. And that and that's some point you, you will see and what happens when that happens is you don't build a strong foundation. So the ministry can grow, 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 but it's going to eventually implode and cave in because a building and a structure is only as strong as its foundation. I was um helping at a church that grew from went from a hundred to three thousand in a little under two years. And it could have been an amazing ministry, but because the the, the prophet of God had issues that he had not settled, the foundation was faulty and the whole church caved in and it does not exist to this day. The next thing is you will create false allegiances. Your people will worship you more than they'll worship God. They will hang on your every word more than they will, rather than opening up their Bible and, and reading the word of God for themselves, they will look to you as father and won't even look to God as father. And the Bible, the God says that he will not have any other gods before him. It is important that we heal so we don't create idol worship. 
The next thing is that you have to trust the one that you are speaking on behalf of. If I don't trust who I'm who is who I'm speaking for, then I may falter in my message. I may be hesitant about delivering the message because I there's an issue of trust there. The next thing is that the last and fifth thing is that a prophet who has not settled the issue of sonship will struggle with rebellion. And because I understand the Bible says that God said that we are not bastards at whom he loves, he corrects and he chastens. When a, a prophet or a person has um, accepts father, accepts fathering and accepts sonship, that they are obedient. But when a prophet has not accepted accepted his sonship, he his ministry will be characterized by bouts of rebellion, doing, doing what they want to do and sin on a cycle is not deliverance. So I just want to pray for you today concerning your father issues. God, I speak to that father wound right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And I ask that you bring healing. I ask that you bring wholeness. God, you said in your word that you are a repairer of the breach, God. God, heal and mend everything that's been broken, everything that's been lost. You said if the thief be found, that he must restore sevenfold, oh God. Father, I, I speak courage into your people right now, God. I speak, I speak strength into your people, God. Grace them to mend the relationship. I speak to every wayward father right now, oh God. And Father, I ask that you mend and heal their hearts, Lord God, because you love them just like you love us. Us, Lord. And Father, I, I speak to loneliness and feelings of rejection and abandonment and hurt, Lord God, and feelings of neglect, Lord. And Father, I ask that you heal everything because you are a healer. You are the chief physician. There is a bomb in Gilead, God, and I bind every satanic assignment, Lord God. I come against every lying spirit, every spirit of deception, and I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit that your prophets are being made whole, Father, that their wounds are being healed in the name of Jesus. God, I, I pray for reconciliation, Lord, and Father, I thank you. Just pick up the phone right now and call him, and Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that I decree that it's done by faith. I decree it's done because I am like Abraham. I stagger not at the promises of God through unbelief, but I am fully persuaded that God, you will do everything that you promise. And Father, I thank you those that are listening to my voice right now, Father, that the healing power of the Holy Spirit is flowing through their minds, their hearts, and their souls today, God, because we know that the enemy wants to yoke you early. I come against every yoke and every burden that the enemy has laid on your children. Father, I pray for those that have been molested or violated, God. Heal the wound right now. Those that have been raped, God. Oh God. Father, I, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are bringing wholeness, that you are being peace. I decree peace in their heart and their mind, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. You can always visit my website and join our blog. Try to be diligent about sending out information. Um, my website is www.betweentheporchandaltar.org. Have an amazing day.